are learning the standard convolutions or the filters. Let's dive deep into some special kinds of techniques that we can apply on the filters. So, in our original story of restricting to windows, we swept some details under the rug. What do we do near the boundary? Sometimes the boundaries of the original image has some interesting information, but the filter pays less attention to it. As you can see in this filter, the original convolution window may ignore this window at the boundary. Well, padding handles this issue. So, what does padding do? Well, padding adds a bunch of rows and columns around the input images. In this example, we are padding with zero for one row and one column. And we follow the same kernel calculation for the output. On our right, here is a great illustration on how the padding works. Besides the boundary problem, another issue we need to address is how many pixels we need to slide through at a time. So far, we have used strat equals to 1 for both height and width. As we can see, if we slide one pixel at a time, the input features will be 90% or even 95% similar to each other, which seems to be too computational burdensome. Well, strats can help in this situation. So, what is strat? Well, strat is the number of rows or the number of columns traversed per slide. So, on our right hand side is a great illustration that shows a strat of two, both vertically and horizontally. So, here is a concrete example of a strat of three for height and two for width. So, how do we calculate the number six in the output? Well, the convolutional window slides down three rows from the first rows on the input, and then element-wise multiply the kernel weights. Similarly, to calculate the second element of the first row, which means the number eight, the convolution window slides two columns to the right from the feature left-hand side. But then the convolution window cannot continue sliding to the right on the input because the input element cannot fill the window unless we add another column of padding on the further right. Well, even though we apply strat to the image kernels or filters, we may still find that reducing the feature dimension from the input feature size needs lots of filtering steps. Well, pooling helps to reduce the features quickly. So what is pooling? Compared with convolution, pooling progressively reduces the spatial size of the representation. The common use pooling are the max pooling and the average pooling. What does pooling do? is to select the max or average signal from an input window. So similarly to convolution, pooling is capable to operate with padding and strat. Well, the biggest benefit for pooling is that we don't need to train any parameters for the pooling layer. As we can see from this example, we select 5, 7, 13, 15, as the max signal from each of the input windows. We can also 
stack the convolution pudding and dense layers together. And that will be a convolutional neural network, which means the CNN. Here is a simple CNN on our right hand side, which is the LeetNet architecture, and we will introduce more about that in the next section. But in general, there is no specific rules on how to stack the layers, but here are some rule of thumbs. First, at the first few layers, we usually have a convolutional layer with large size of window as 11 by 11 kernel. Second, we often put a pooling layers after the convolutional layers to shrink the filter size. Third, we usually have a dense layer in the end, since it is computationally expensive to optimize the parameters at the front. And there are smaller feature size in the later layers. The computational burden sum can be elevated for the dense layer. And now you have learned all the fundamental knowledge of convolutional neural networks. Now let's build a CNN line by line in this Jupyter Notebook ML8CV Day 1 CNN. We will read a simple image dataset and then use a built in layers such as the curve or pooling operators in Gluon Deep Learning Library to train a CNN model.